I'll just have a, a swift look at this princess I got a few weeks ago. It's in an acetate one. It's an early-ish, mid fifties. It's got steps on the body rather than on the uh, on the on the front bogey. No coupling either. So the body's in, in fairly nice condition, although it has some warping. If we look look down it, there's a little distortion here. So it probably sits somewhere between a, a plunger princess and sort of 1955, 56-ish, I imagine. With the, the swap over to um, polystyrene instead of acetate. So it's uh, showing its age a little bit. I believe it, the earlier ones had a slot in the back there for that draw bar to run through. I'm not sure the date that that swapped over. So uh, plain valve gear. I love the plain, plain valve gear. Really lovely looking thing. So we have a, have a look at those wheels. It's uh, they're fairly dull, aren't they? So uh, it needs a little bit of work. It will never pull um, a massive amount, I don't think, because uh, the tender's a little bit on the weak side as well. So early-ish tender. So if, uh, they redesigned the tender shortly after this, I think. It's a slightly different shape at the back. And this has got those uh, very early wheels, no flange on the center. You can see it's split down the middle of the chassis. It's all glued together. So we can't get it apart. Very, very shiny. There's a little bit of warping going on there as well. If we have a look in the, uh, the pin here on the, on the tender, which goes into the draw bar, has come loose. So I don't really want to drill that because there isn't, there isn't a lot to, to go, go into there. Um, so I, I may try gluing that into position. I had to fairly good success with that in the past. So sadly, I won't be able to extract the axles and clean them up, but they, they are fairly free running. So it will run, I think. And the coupling's in fairly good shape at the back. Just needs a, a little bit of adjustment. And those uh, decals are quite nice, heat printed, I believe, in, in gold. So it's sort of embossed into the surface. And from what I've read, that should be a gold color. Looks a little bit more muted yellow now, doesn't it? I don't think the coal load's separate. I think that's all part of part of the same mould. So it's definitely been about, about a bit, sorry, hasn't it? So we'll uh, just pop that one down over there. See, it does run. It's a little bit stiff. So we'll just pop this upside down and we'll have a look what happens when we apply a little bit of power to the old wheels, this uh, blue thing. So sending the colour temperature wild on the uh, on the camera here. Not very encouraging that, is it? Let's see if we apply power directly to the uh, pickup there. No, it seems a, a little bit dead, doesn't it? So we'll, uh, we'll whip off the body and have a, have a look inside and see what's going on. So this isn't really a how-to, but uh, I'm just gonna take it apart and we'll have a look and then uh, we'll cut to it when I've uh, got it a little bit further down the line. We'll get rid of that, see if we can improve the colour, I think. So, see if we can ease off the, the body there. There we go. Motor looks fairly tidy, doesn't it? Again, those wheels are very dull and tarnished, aren't they? The, they're very rough when you run your fingernail over them, almost like sandpaper. So I believe you better clean those up. A little bit dusty and hairy. Nice bogey. I've got another one of these, but uh, she's lost her front steps. Slightly earlier coupling on the tender, but I had to put some weight on there because these these keep bouncing around and jumping off the off the rails. We'll just have a swift look at the, the body while we're at it. We'll take out that uh, very large securing screw. Just have a quick look over it on the inside. See, fairly dusty. Great big split there where the uh, acetate's begun to shrink and uh, around the, uh, the metal chassis and caused it to crack. Trying's name, made in England. And then we've got the uh, model number there, R50 and R53, so they were 
making the green princess by this point. So we'll uh, just pop that down. We've got a cab detail in there. Let's see. Uh, see if we apply power directly to the motor and see what see what happens. See if we get any uh, get any life out of it. See if we can just hold that. See if it's uh, fairly dead. Let's see if we can uh, do something about that. Strangely, I'd uh, trip the trip the switch on the controller, so we had no power. So let's have have a look at the un underside again. Let's see what we get on on the old wheels this time. Yep. A little bit of spark there, wasn't there? But uh, I don't think there's. Ooh, there we go. I'm not sure whether that's just tripped out the controller again. Let's have a look around the other side. Let's put some power directly to the motor. See if we can hold that. See what we get now. Yeah, she's going to run. Sounds very, very dry, doesn't she? So I'll just come back to it and uh, we'll see if we can get the motor off on camera and uh, you'll have to excuse it, all fingers and thumbs. So we'll just take that connection off there. This is uh, quite difficult doing this looking through the back of the camera. We'll just keep that on there to keep the brush in place. Grab the old screwdriver, plenty of magnetism there. I don't think we've got any problems with the, with the motor. In that respect, it won't need uh, remagnetizing. It's amazing these old motors keep the magnetism. It's usually the diesels I find that uh, tend to have no magnetism in them. Let's see if we can get that one last couple of turns out of there. No, I think we're going to have to go back back for the screwdriver there. There we go, I think we have it. We'll just pop that to one side. See if we can ease the motor out of there. I'll just pop the chassis down for a moment. Have a swift look at the, the motor. So fairly dirty. Could do with a little bit of a clean. Slightly earlier design without the the felt pad at the back there. And that's interesting, it's been uh, soldered, the worm's been soldered on, I don't know whether that's an original or a fix, but uh, we'll see. As I say, there's plenty of uh, magnetism there with, with that uh, motor. Pretty good. So we'll not have to get down down to, to re-magnetise that, it's a fairly good snap. There, as you, as you turn it round, as the magnetism grabs each time. So we'll pop that down. Have a look at the, the chassis. I think what I'm gonna do with the chassis is remove everything and go for uh, soap and warm water to start with and clean the whole thing up. So let's just have, a, have another quick look at that motor. See if she runs a little bit smoother off the chassis. Got the control over definitely with power on at this time. The trip switch hasn't gone. Definitely sounds a little bit dry, doesn't it? So I think if we give that a little bit of oil. So we'll put a little bit of drop on the bearing at the back. Some on this felt pad here. And I think that uh, is going to benefit from taking the brushes out and giving that a clean as well. But let's see what difference that sort of makes. Instantly different, isn't it? The magic of oil, eh? 
than there is for, the, for those of you who've done this before. The smell off these motors is uh, something else. Let's just pop that down. Do that all day. It'll, it'll bottle that smell. Let's just put the, the cap back on here. Give the, the fingers a wipe. Sorry about that. So I think we're gonna have to take uh, various bits and pieces off this. I'll see what I can do while we're on, on the camera. And uh, we'll, uh, might have to break from it at some point if I come up against the part I can't do. Looking through the back of the camera here, or the, the telephone, and there is a, a part just dropped down there. We've got that. It's just that little spacer washer there from there. So I'll just remove that. There's quite a bit of rust on these. So we'll have to have a look at cleaning these up in a kind manner. Just pop those to one side and pull off that rod. Whoops. Stuck to the motor. There we go, see how dirty those are on the back side there. I think those will clean up quite nicely. Let's see if we can have a look on the front side. Actually, it's the other side. There's a bit more rust, although that pin there is quite bad. I'll just pop that over there. Let's have a look at the other side here. There we go. Let's see if we can not drop the, the little spacer this time. There we have it, tiny little things. So I told you it's all fingers and thumbs. And there we have the, the rods on this side. A little bit worse condition on this side. I have to take some uh, drastic, drastic action with those. I'll take that off there. Doesn't look too bad. They spin reasonably freely, actually. Let's see if we can get this, this cylinder block off without breaking it. Just ease that out. So I thought that would have just jumped out. They're normally four fall away when you don't want them to. Should we take the, the bogey off and then get a bit better grip on it? Let's just get that. Got the screw. Let's have a look at that. There's quite a tight fit on there. There we go. Off it comes. Lots of oil. I don't know whether they're made out of acetate or something slightly softer. There's a little bit of flex in it, but uh, I'm gonna be quite careful with that. Again, a little bit of rust in here. I'll pop that down. Take the, the rear truck off here. Take these wheels out and give them a clean as well. So I'll leave that till, till later on. So we just need to get this uh, wiring off here before we can uh, give it a bit of a wash. So we'll have the screw out of there as well. Out of the weight on the top. I'm sure there's technical terms for these items. So we'll put the other screw in there. And then we'll get the collection plate off the bottom too. That one's quite loose. There we 
go. These phosphor bronze um, wipers, oh there we go, the dry solder joint on there, no wonder there's not much pickup from the wheels, so that's made extracting that a little better, a little easier should I say. So that's going to take just a little bit of cleaning up. You saw there was an insulating uh, card insulator there, let's just pop that down to insulate the the collection plate from, from the chassis, so it's quite important to keep that. Otherwise the, the whole thing, let's see if we can get that in focus again, the whole thing will keep shorting out. And so uh, there's a little bit of bending and going on in these, I don't know whether that's been done to improve the uh, the running of the model. Still, we'll come back to that later. But uh, here we go, we've got the chassis pretty much down, as far as I'm going to take it apart anyway. I'm not going to start extracting wheels and uh, getting back into quartering. That drive gear in there looks in fairly tidy condition to me. So we'll, uh, we'll give this a wash in some warm soapy water I think. So while that chassis is drying I've, I've just glued that pin back in place, which I'm hoping is going to stay. I've had good success doing that before. And I've just begun to clean these, these tender wheels up. So I've done this one just with a little bit of soapy water on the cotton bud, and then just gently wet it and roll it around, and then use the dry end. And they're not that dirty to start with. I don't think it's done very much work. So you can see, you're going to get quite a bit of dirt off there, so I'll, uh, I'll just continue to clean that up and we'll hopefully have those as, as good as they're ever going to get um, when we're ready to run, perhaps a little oil just to aid the, the smoothness of those. They do roll, they're a little bit a little bit stiff, but as I say, this, this, uh, this model's never going to do a great deal of work on the layout. It would be just no, nice to see it run under its own uh, motor, really. Now that chassis dried up quite nicely in the end, I just left that overnight just to sort of air dry and we'll, uh, we'll sort those wheels out a little bit later on. While, whilst that was uh, drying itself, I finished off the tender and I've done the, uh, the front bogey. I didn't remove the wheels, it wasn't necessary. Be careful if you're going to because the, the, the plastic is quite uh, fragile now and you could end up splitting them so you'd want to sort of heat those up dip them in hot water perhaps and uh, soften them before you try and remove them they should just pull out easily well not easily but the interference fit but they will come out with a little bit of work if you really needed to take the axe out if it was rusty and so on so uh, we've got the tender all cleaned up now the, the wheels we might as well just have a swift look at those now I've done them all as I say they weren't that dirty to start with but uh, they look a bit better now and it all all sort of helps we'll put that back down so we've just got this uh, rear truck to uh, deal with now so we've got uh, sleeved wheels so one one wheel spins with the axle I don't know whether you can see that can we see that run round like that and the other one spins freely or theoretically freely on the axle so um, with uh, oiling and so on over the years this becomes quite stiff so that one's not too bad, but I'm going to take that out and just give it a clean on the inside. So I'm using an old screwdriver here just to push the axle through. And it can be a little fiddly. Sometimes a tap with a hammer could be could be necessary to uh, just to, to encourage it out. And again, it couldn't hurt to dip the whole thing in quite warm water to soften the plastic. There we go. So we'll just remove the screwdriver. So we've got the, the two wheels there, I'll clean those up in the same manner as the other one, but I'll run a pipe cleaner down the middle there to clean clean out any, any muck or congealed oil. We'll get those all nice and clean. The axle doesn't look to be in too bad a shape really. So uh, just give that a clean with some uh, lighter fuel. So just pop these down. And then we're gonna have a look at uh, just cleaning up these in a moment so 
this is just all, all quite oily so a bit of cardboard there's not a lot we can do with that but these uh, phosphor bronze pickups I think uh, a little bit of straightening perhaps in order here and uh, wipe off some of this uh, buildup of oil and grease so if we, we just got a, a bit of cloth and a bit of petrol and that should begin to sort of clean up get off what we can and then we we'll use the, uh, the fiberglass pen just to clean it up a bit more So they're going to clean up really nicely and I'm going to straighten those out a little as well. I think we perhaps need a little bit more petrol on there. So there'll be years of dirt really on there and give that plate a little bit of clean. Sorry, a little clean. It's quite stained really, but uh, it is what it is in the end. It's a, quite an old toy, isn't it? So just pop that down. And then we can use this sort of wooden block to, to rest these along. That way around. And we can give those a good clean with a fiberglass pen so it doesn't take much now we can just hold that to, still on there give that another clean there on that side so it is all fingers and thumbs when you're trying to do this through the back of the camera or the telephone as in this case. See if we can keep that in focus. So largely these outside edges are probably a little bit more on the cosmetic side than the unnecessarily inside edges are the ones that are going to do the collection but it doesn't harm to, to clean it up. It's looking a lot better, isn't it? We'll just give that one a bit more of a go along there. So then that's where we're going to solder that wire back to, so we get to continuity back to the motor. We might as well go for both sides of that one, I think. against there so that uh, should solder up quite neatly I think just rub it along there as well just give that a bit of a clean there we go so we'll have to uh, get some of these things reinstalled in a moment so I'm just going to take the, the the thick of the uh, the dirt or corrosion off the wheels I'm just going to use the fiberglass pen on the wheel and I'm going to rub it backwards and forwards down the track like this and see if we can uh, improve the surface of the wheel. We'll do that a few times and then we'll have a look. I think you'll be able to see that that's, uh, that's beginning to improve no end. We'll get the thick of it off and then we'll get the motor back on and we'll, we'll finish it off with the motor in place to to spin the wheels but uh, I think the, the heavy stuff needs to come off like this first so let's see it's going to be quite a boring sort of a job possibly quite satisfying let's have a look see that's that's coming together quite nicely isn't it so I'll, I'll get on and do that and uh, then we'll get the motor back on and that uh, wiring soldered onto the collection plate as well so that's, uh, that's going to be just fine I think and then uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get it to run So we'll 
just solder that uh, cable back onto the collection plate there. I've got a bit of flux on it and it's all cleaned up, so we just need to lightly touch that to warm up the solder. Let that cool back in. And there we have it, a nice simple joint. So I'll just get this collection plate back on, but you can see I've got the insulating card there. And I've got the, the hole lined up with the collection plate into the screw hole there. And we'll uh, just slot that back down. Let's see if we can line this one up. There we go, see if we can get one of the, the screws back in the hole there. So here's all fingers and thumbs again. There we go. See if we can give a, a couple of turns on the screwdriver there. Get that back into position. We'll only put that in loosely while we we'll, we'll pop the other one in, in position. So the toothpick's just holding, uh, not toothpick, cocktail stick, sorry. Um, just holding it in position. He says, hopefully. We'll just pop that back in the hole. There we go. Give that a little turn backwards so it drops into place. Try and prevent it cross-threading. We'll just leave those loose for a moment while we have a look. That seems to line up pretty good. Just nip them up. Just going to get the uh, the motor back in position now. So we'll just drop it into the slot there. I just need to turn that mo worm a little bit there so it sits into position. And the wire just coming behind there. And then we'll, we'll get a screw to hold that in place there. Again, fingers and thumbs. See if we can get a, a little turn on that. So we'll get the, the screwdriver down there. There we go. Gentle turn back till it drops into place. Just nip that in gently to start with. There, we won't over tighten it. See that turns nicely, doesn't it? There we go. So we'll just get that other screw on here to hold this in, into position. Whether there should be sort of a, a tag washer soldered onto that, but it seems to have just been wrapped around. It looks fairly original. It doesn't look like there's ever been any uh, solder in there. We'll just leave it alone. It seems to have done its job for now. Oops. We'll just uh, nip that up. We might need to adjust the angle of that in a moment. See if we can get that uh, connector in there behind the behind the arm. Let's we'll see if we can sit it on there and back into position. You need more fingers than we really have to do this job. So that seems to be uh, fairly neat and tidy. So I've got the the rods back on the one side. And uh, we're just going to put them back on the other side. See, the, the rust's really attacked these quite heavily on this side. So I've, I've cleaned that up using a, a silvo type thing and uh, given them a good clean, taking that back as far as I'm going to, I think. We'll just leave it at that stage. Possibly if we look after it, it won't go any further, but uh, perhaps keep a look out for some uh, spare parts and uh, we'll uh, have a look at the other side here. So we'll just pop, see if we can pop the rod back in there, let's see if we can get that in there. In there, there we go. Again, it's all fingers and thumbs here. So this probably isn't the best way to do it, holding it in midair, but uh, trying to get it to show on the camera. There's gotta be a compromise at some point. So if I can get that, this is particularly tricky here. I'll get the, the right way around, here we go. Get that in, line all three things up together. There we have it. 
runs quite smoothly. And then we've got the little washer to pop in here. So I'll, I'll see if I can do this on the camera. If not, I'll have to, to cut away from this and, and come back to it. Let's see if we can balance that on top of there while I reach for the impossibly small screw. Almost got it. There we go, see if we can get the, the whole thing together. There we go, all in. And let's see if we can uh, encourage the, the screw back into the, the place it came from. So we'll just turn it back a little. There we go, it's dropped into place. And there we have it. Actually, that's just caught on the shoulder, so we'll just uh, give that a wiggle. There we go, just take, take it up and then screw that down. There we go, got it that time. As I say, this isn't the best way to do it. Trying to do it through the back of a phone. Far easier to do it down on the bench, I think. So I'm just going to put a couple of drops of oil on here just to uh, get things going. Not going to overdo it. Another one there. Again, trying to do this while looking through the back of the, the camera is quite tricky. There we go. Get uh, down there, down there, in there, in there, and down there, and a little down there. Well, I did put some on the motor a while ago, but we've left it. This is a, a couple of days since I ran the motor. I don't think it had oil for quite some time. At that period, so let's uh, stick that on the rolling road and we'll uh, see how that goes. There we go, we'll turn that on. It seems to be quite successful. Do it the other direction one more time. And the other way, just for good luck. So I think we're probably in business there. If we just have a, a swift look over that. So I think I'll get the, uh, the whole thing back together now and we'll uh, have a look at it on the layout. Perhaps clean off that big drop of oil I've left there. And there she goes, storming along there with a couple of R21 maroon and cream coaches from the mid 50s. I think they look great together. Just listen to it as she rolls over the point work outside the station here. I think that's an excellent sound. Toy trains running along toy track. Now, as I said earlier, this wasn't a uh, how-to video. I think it's probably more a what can be done video. And I don't think there's any right or wrong way of going about any of, the, any of these little things we've had a look at today in the, in the video, provided you end up with a, a result which is pleasing to you. And I'm uh, very happy with the result. Now, thanks again for watching. It's hugely appreciated. If you look back again next time, we'll have something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now.